Today we're checking out a wireless pack called the Benico Golden Plug. This runs on 2.4 gigahertz. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys, this is Shane. So today we're checking out yet another wireless pack from a company called Benico. This is the Golden Plug. Let's take a look. The Golden Plug wireless system runs on 2.4 gigahertz and they sell for about 60 bucks US. So that's how much they cost. And my first impressions of these in the hand is they kind of feel a little bit plasticky, um, but I like this part here. It's got like a metal feel about it. I don't think, I don't know if it is metal or not, or it's just a sticker or something, but it feels kind of cool in the center here. But overall, um, very plasticky, but you know, that's what you get for 60 bucks. But I don't try to let that put me off because plastic stuff can last forever. We also get and a charge cable as well, which is a single USB to a double mini USB, so you can charge them both at the same time with one cable. That's awesome. One of the great things about this pack already is the fact you just click the buttons once and they sync. It's that simple. You don't need to hold anything down. You don't need to pair anything. It just turn them on and they're good to go. Turn them off, click the button again, and that is it. I really like that about them. Looking at the online instructions, you get between five and eight hours from this particular pack, and I think the discrepancy in the time there is because we also get a headphone output. So if you're using the headphone output, odds are it's going to drain the battery that little bit faster. We also get an auxiliary in on this one so you can play music into it, which I think is a pretty good addition. Having the headphone jack is pretty innovative. I've got to say, I don't think I've actually seen another wireless receiver pack that actually has that. So that's pretty cool. Now, in terms of wireless range, these claim up to about 90 feet at its maximum under probably ideal conditions. So we're going to go outside and test these out in just a moment. And they also, in terms of audio quality, run at 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. So nice and clear, and they'll work with anything you can plug them into, guitar-wise, bass-wise, violin, all that kind of stuff. So one of the small criticisms I have of this already, and something I've already noticed, is it will depend heavily on the guitar you're using, how well these will actually fit, as per all wireless devices. But this one in particular has a little bit of a flaw that you can't actually push it any closer to the body of the guitar which means it's gonna spin. If you're moving around, you've got a really good chance of actually knocking this out from your guitar. So just be really cautious of that. If you're playing a Strat or another guitar where you plug in from the front and it's sitting sort of flush like this, you'll have much better luck with it just being more stable than on a Les Paul, for example. But, you know, for the sake of the video, I thought we'd try this out outside with my PRS, which is a very similar con connection to this, and then also indoors with my Telecaster. So. Let's get out there and make some noise. So let's give this a test outside. So what I've done, I've hooked up the Joyo Band Amp Jackman amplifier head to the little cab. A little bit of delay going through. I'm gonna create a little bit of a different vibe as we test out this wireless pack. So I'm gonna go back there and see how well it works. We'll do the turnaround test as well. Sometimes wireless packs struggle if you're not actually in direct line of sight. So we're gonna give this a shot. The amp is just behind the camera and I'm gonna go back down there. So here we go. It just broke up a little bit there. I've lost line of sight, so I'd assume it's probably going to work better directly facing the receiver. Interesting, it's breaking up even at this distance. I'll just make sure it's plugged in properly. It's breaking up. So I can see the receiver, it's inside, but it's just back behind the door. So this is direct line of sight. Hopefully I'm still in the shot. Seems to be working okay now, which is odd. So I don't know. It's a nice clean tone actually. I'll tell you what, since I've got Back in line of sight, it's been working better. That initial off-camera sort of angle I was at when I walked over this side of the house, that's when it broke up. Uh, it seems to be a bit more stable now. Yep, 
If it is breaking up, I'll leave some annotations on the screen. It's a little hard to hear. I haven't got it cranked, obviously. I've got people around, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go back out of line of sight again. And now it seems to be working. My neighbors must think I'm nuts. <laughs> Let's try now indoors. I know not everyone will want to take their guitar out into the jungle or whatever, so we'll see how well it works indoors. I'm playing my 52 reissue Telecaster with a set of Joe Bard and Danny Gatton pickups. And as you can see, wireless pack is in. It still doesn't sit flush or anything like that to the body of the guitar, but we'll see how well it performs. So here we go. Now, minus all that delay I got going on, I think it sounds pretty fine. I haven't heard any of it break up or do anything weird. It's a nice clean signal, no problems there at all. Let's now try it out of line of sight. So I'm gonna take five steps this way, which will be back towards my back door here. So let's give it a go. Yeah, I actually thought it would work way better indoors. Having the reflections off the wall definitely helps these type of units. Uh, no questions there. I was right near the back door again, so on the way back outside, it works fine. Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. So what do I think of this particular pack? Now I'm gonna break this down, not only in terms of price, but how well it performed indoors and outs, and then some criticisms about them. So indoors, they worked extremely well, no problems there, even out of line of sight, it worked awesome. Outdoors, it didn't work so well, at least in my situation, it did glitch quite a bit, listening back to it in post, especially I noticed, oh, it's sort of glitching. But if you're in line of sight, it's not too bad outdoors at a certain distance. Once you start pushing that a little bit, it kind of breaks up a little bit. So any indoor gig that you might have, I don't think you'd have any problems with it. My biggest criticism of this pack is this angle. If you're gonna be using these, my suggestion would be to buy a female sort of connector cable to this, to mail, and then plug that into your guitar and put this in your pocket or click it onto your belt or something like that. So you don't sort of lose this mid gig. That would be devastating. And having an angle like this is really sort of limiting unless you're playing a Strat or some other guitars where you can just sort of plug it into the top side of the guitar. So yeah, the design isn't great in terms of uh, this sort of axis. It needed to go further than 90 degrees, but it is what it is. For 60 bucks, I think they performed pretty well. Sound quality wise, you know, when everything's working and you're indoors, it's fine. It feels exactly like a cable. And I guess it's pretty cool having that headphone jack as well. I'm not one to really use headphones when I play guitar, I prefer not to, but it's there if you so choose. And you know, you get up to five to eight hours of battery life as well. So overall, not, not too bad at all. A massive thanks to the guys for sending this out. I really appreciate it. If you wanna find out more about it, I'll leave some links in the description below. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and click the bell for video notifications.